the effects on ocean freight capacity are starting to get worse almost a month after the Ever Given ran aground in the Suez Canal. When the Suez, one of the busiest trade lanes in the globe, was blocked, ships arrived late to critical ports of call. Transporters had to respond by cancelling sailings that were scheduled on these late ships. Jan van Kasteren, Vice President of Flexport Europe, said earlier this month that many of these sailings will likely be delayed for longer than forecasted, and the altered schedules have been forcing transporters to unload cargo at incorrect ports as they attempt to rapidly turn ships around and get shipping containers back to Asia, according to the Lodestar. Port congestion and delays at both origins and destinations are expected to make the container shortage in Asia worse over the next few weeks, Fredos said in a market update. Container ships log jam at U.S. ports isn't helping to ease that situation. Even though the number of container ships stuck at anchor off Los Angeles and Long Beach is down to around 20 per day from 30 a few months ago, it doesn't mean the capacity crunch in the trans-Pacific market is improving. Narijas Paskas, Vice President of Global Ocean at Freight Forward of Flexport, warned the supply chain problem is not getting better. It's only getting worse, he told American Shipper in an interview on Monday. What I'm seeing is unprecedented. We are seeing a tsunami of freight, he reported. For the month of May, everything on the Trans-Pacific is basically sold out. We had one client who needed something loaded in May that was extremely urgent and who was ready to pay $15,000 per container. I could not get it loaded. And we are a growing company that ships a lot of TEUs. That's a 20-foot equivalent unit. Price doesn't always even matter anymore, Poskus revealed. But Trans-Pacific import volumes are still rising. In January, Trans-Pacific imports increased by 10% compared to 2020 and 13.5% in February, then climbed 51% in March. So, we're now at 1.5 times pre-outbreak levels, says Poskus. The supply chain expert argues that the number of imports is largely outpacing retail sales growth. Therefore, the unprecedented import volume is mainly attributed to inventory restocking rather than higher consumer demand. The restocking is actually affecting the trade even more than growth in demand, he outlined. That tells me that this will last even longer. Let's say U.S. consumer demand slows down in quarter three and quarter four. That's not expected, but even if it does, capacity availability and rates should not improve quickly simply because of the huge restocking demand. Pascos highlights that there's probably a growing export backlog piling up each day in Asia, awaiting available shipping containers. If that backlog grows too much, he said, I honestly don't know what's going to happen. As a consequence of the backlog and restocking demand, he believes prices will remain high and shipping will probably remain difficult for the rest of this year. And then after that, you have the peak for Chinese New Year in 2022. The global trader said the situation today is the worst he has ever witnessed, and he thinks it's about to get even more severe. Buckle up. The month of May will be the worst people have ever seen, he maintained. As several shippers will have to wait in line behind the ever-growing backlog in Asia, he predicts, what's going to happen soon is some importers won't even be able to get on the boat. For them, it'll be almost like trade is coming to a halt. Paskus' statements reflect cargo bookings data. According to FreightWave's Greg Miller, the company's sonar platform presents a proprietary index of shippers' ocean bookings. 
Typically, bookings to the U.S. are measured in 20-foot equivalent units on a 10-day moving average basis as of the scheduled date of overseas departure. As of Monday, the index was at a new all-time high, and forward bookings data showed a continued rise ahead, said Miller. Last Friday, the Freitas Baltic Daily Index evaluated the Asia West Coast spot rate to be at $4,797 per 40-foot equivalent unit, that's FEU, and the Asia East Coast rate at $6,306 per FEU. Both are recording all-time highs. But indexes and rates are only a small part of the story. Indexes are not bills. Premiums are not reflected in the indexes, said Paskus. At the beginning of the year, a parcel of the premium charges was reduced as container availability in Asia improved. But now, that has been reversed, he has asserted, noting that the ever-given accident resulted in a disastrous shortage of container equipment from the global market. Container shortages in Asia are again very bad because of the ever given, and it will take another four to six weeks to come back to normal. The added premiums to get spot cargo loaded are back, and they're higher than before, he said. They are two to three thousand dollars above FAK, that's the spot price, and that's the best case. Even smart cargo that has been booked 21 days prior and was forecast within the shipper's allocation is still getting FA key pricing on spot, he noted. At this point, everything last minute is basically a free-for-all auction. You're basically offering as much money as you can and hoping somebody will take it. Many importers are now struggling. We're seeing so many new customers approaching us asking for help because they can't get loaded, disclosed Paskus. Furthermore, recent data released by Zenita, a company that collects contract information, indicated that Asia West Coast contracts are being negotiated in 2021 at around 30% to 50% higher levels than in 2020. However, the numbers presented by the Flexport VP are roughly doubled Zenita's. We are seeing fixed price increases of slightly over 100% on Asia West Coast and about 75% on Asia East Coast, he said. Also, almost every single contract rate is subject to peak season surcharges, PSSs, so the prices aren't exactly fixed. When asked about shippers who have yet to close their annual contracts, the executive said, if you want a fixed price in today's market, the answer you'll get from the carriers is that it's too late. We advised many importers to sign early because the trans-Pacific contract season would close early because there's more demand than supply. And that's exactly what happened. In essence, if you are just a simple importer and you're yet to sign your fixed contract, you will be in the spot market, he concluded. In case you're wondering how this freight crisis might affect you, it's essential to consider that all companies that need to ship or receive shipments of products have to rent what's known as an intermodal container for that purpose. And knowing that's not an easy task at the moment, logistic disruptions will further delay the delivery of a wide range of products to grocery shelves and several U.S. industries. Companies do not usually buy containers to avoid suffering from such sudden interruptions, particularly because there are only two companies in the world that build and sell shipping containers. Both are based in China, which is now dealing with a tidal wave of bankruptcies and most industries cannot accelerate the pace of manufacturing until things are put under control. So. As the container shipping shortage aggravates, the cost of rent and shipment keeps skyrocketing. Before 2020, transporting a standard 40-foot container on a ship sailing from a Chinese port cost about $1,000. Today, considering prices are being negotiated on the spot, 
companies are being forced to pay roughly $10,000 per container. And of course, the problems brought on by this crisis are not limited to ports, since the delays also impact other parts of the economy. The log jam happening in U.S. ports is delaying the return of empty containers to Asian ports, and as a result, delaying the delivery of other imports into our country. Every import container that transports goods becomes an export container shortly thereafter, carrying other goods around the world. In face of all of the mentioned factors, it's clear that products will continue to face major difficulties getting to their destinations around the world because this crisis in the high seas has completely distressed global commerce and a wide range of things, including cars, clothing, food, furniture, electronics and raw materials usually shipped in those containers are likely to face shortages even more acute than previously predicted leaving global traders panicked as high consumer demand is still adding pressure on the issue. Higher shipping costs will directly affect consumer prices, and analysts have been warning that the supply chain disruption could last a year or longer, even if Americans rush in to manufacture missing or delayed products right here at home. Shortages, higher costs for imports, and a lower variety of products is what is coming next for United States consumers. So, brace yourselves for a general rise in inflationary pressures over the course of 2021 as global supply chains continue to struggle and the impacts of supply and demand imbalances and the shipping container crunch are forcing prices up and such significant increases will finally make it to your wallets.